So, welcome to a uh, last module of this uh, course that is a SPDC transmission system and this is module number 7 and in that I uh, will uh, be delivering three subtopics. Uh, one is uh, today I am going to discuss that is a multi terminal HVDC system. Second topic I will discuss uh, this uh, HVDC light or uh, also it is although trade name given by ABB and even though Siemens gives uh, HVDC plus. So, this basically HVDC has a different feature than the conventional HVDC where this uh, they are using the IGBTs and we will discuss the d details of the uh, HVDC light or HVDC plus. And third part I will be discussing about this application of HVDC system in wind power or renewable power integration issues and that will be the last of this one, this module. So, to start with this is the lecture number 1 of this module and that is dedicated to the multi terminal HVDC system. So far we have studied the two terminal HVDC means where we are having one, one terminal means the two stations are there. One station is working as a rectifier and another one is working as a rec inverter at a time. Although this uh, rectifier can work as an inverter as well and the inverter can work as a rectifier as well. So, that is we are talking the two converters because converter can work as a rectifier mode or inverter mode. So, we are having the two converters then it is called two terminal HVDC link which is already we discussed all this about the two terminal. So, there is also possibility that we can go for the more than two. So, that is a multi terminal HVDC transmission is an HVDC system with more than two converter stations. So, for example, as already I explained that is in the two terminal HVDC system here we are having one terminal here it is working as a let us suppose rectifier then another will be working as your inverter and then it is your two terminal. Here this is a connector with the, your AC system and this side also AC system. So, this is your two terminal because terminal number 1 here terminal number 2. But if we are putting more than two uh, converter station that can have a different combination. It can suppose for example, if you are putting here one converter station here, then you can say now it is a multi terminal because here you can say the three converter. So, more than two terminal uh, more than two uh, converter station even in DC link, then it is called multi terminal HVDC transmission system. No doubt this uh, multi terminal HVDC transmission system is more complex than the ordinary the point to point or two terminal HVDC system. In particular, the control system is more elaborate and the telecommunication requirement between the stations become larger. Because as we know, if it is a two terminal uh, HVDC system, here one terminal here operating as the voltage mode, it is a two terminal. If one is controlling the voltage, another will be controlling the current or vice versa. So, here we require a communication channel that that is we should know that which is operating on the voltage and other which is operating as a current. So, that information we require the communication. Now, if you are going for another then we have the communication between this converter to this converter, this converter to this converter and this converter to this conversion wire. So, we require more and more telecommunication requirement if you are going for more and more number of converter station or you can say we are going for the multi terminal HVDC system. The first multi terminal DC system which uh, here in my presentation I am talking the MTDC means multi terminal DC system is designed for the continuous operation of Corsica Italy scheme. It is the expansion of the Sardinia Italy system built in 1967. Basically the third terminal was added earlier it was operating in the two terminal and third terminal was added at the Corsica Italy terminal DC system between the then cantons in the Quebec and the Corsica Hemisphere built in the 1986 is being extended to the three terminal and the later on also is the five terminal scheme. So, although this uh, power rating was not big, but still it is operating in the multi terminal of multi terminal HVDC transmission system. The first large scale multi terminal HVDC system in operation in the world is the 2000 megawatt that is between the hydro cubic and the new electron transmission system and that is built by ABB in 1987 and 1982 and 1992. The operating experience of this transmission system is very good and has proof that the from a technical point of view there are no problems to connect the several converter stations to the same HVDC transmission system. So, if you are having the two terminal 
that you can go for the multi terminal you can add the converter stations and then again means you have to go for the control philosophy you have to change also the communication requirement is just we just so that can operate in the multi terminal operate, uh, hvdc system so that's the problem of hvdc system as it is said it is a point to point transmission means the power here if you are just evacuating it will be going here directly at this end there is no intermediate tapping so that's why it is called point to point transmission but if you are adding more converter stations or you are making this two terminal HVTC system to multi terminal HVTC system then you can type the power and it was found with the experience and operating experience that it is a possible only that is at the cost of the complexity and also at the cost of more and more communication requirement. So, what is the first this is the biggest and uh, you can say highest voltage level multi terminal HVTC system that is a plus minus 800 kilo volt and that is called ultra high voltage HVDC because it is a more than plus minus 500 it is a bipolar operation transmission link between the north eastern region of India and between the Agra. So, this link is uh, still uh, under the process under the construction and hopefully it will be coming and then it will be the first words of ultra high voltage DC transmission network that is a BIPO. The HVDC light uh, technology makes the multi terminal schemes because if we are going for the HVDC light that is uh, solving lot of problems of HVDC as well and that technology makes the multi terminal system um, a lot easier since it is no need to balance the current like the conventional HVDC terminal system. We will see the HVDC light or HVDC plus in the, our next lectures and then we will find that the application of this can be going be again giving the boost to the multi terminal operation of the HVDC system. You can see this uh, uh, there is a broadly I can see the multi terminal DC network can be classified into two category one is called the constant voltage or the parallel scheme and another is called the constant current or that is known as the series scheme and no doubt third category is also possible if you are combining the parallel and series and that is called hybrid scheme where you can have the parallel as well as series combination altogether. So, let us see what is the constant voltage or the parallel scheme as its name the constant voltage means here the voltage is maintained the voltage all the terminal converter stations they are operating on the same voltage. However, the current sharing is the different principle all the stations are sharing the different current. So, the voltage is constant. So, in parallel scheme the converters are connected in the parallel and operates at a common voltage means the voltage of all these converters are same and you can see here that is in this fixture that is a converter station diagram that is the converter station 1, 2, 3 and 4 here we are having the 4 converter stations and all these are operating in the bipolar mode you can see this is a uh, this is in between. So, this is a positive polarity another is working on the negative polarity. So, this is a minus this is a plus and we are having the 1, 2, 3 and 4 converter stations. So, you can see the voltage of this converter station if you are taking from ground to the positive polarity or from ground to the negative polarity it's all are having the same polarity same voltage. So, that is we are operating on the common voltage. So, a schematic diagram or system diagram you can see here this is a converter 1, 2, 3 and 4 they are just can be shown in this fashion as well they are connected with the AC system here 1 and 2 at this side and the 2, 3 this side you can find here. So, this is the parallel multi terminal DC bipolar scheme because bipolar you can see here the ground is 0 one terminal here that is a positive another terminal is negative. So, it is called bipolar scheme with the radial DC network it is almost radial you can see in this configuration. So, current is flowing here to here. Now, another category as I told that uh, a, a constant current or it is a series scheme in the series scheme basically the converters are connected in series at its name with the common direct current flowing through all the terminals means in the previous case the voltage was same for all the terminal however in the constant current the current through all the terminals are same a converter stations is same and that can be seen here. So, this is a diagram you can say the system diagram where you can say the DC current which is a circulating here is a constant among this converter station. So, in this case also is a shown a pictorial diagram where we are having this uh, at 4 terminal terminal 1, 2, 3 and 4 and you can see it is represented like this and in uh, converter station connection diagram if you will see you can see the converter 1, 2, 3 and 4 you can see this ID is a constant which is flowing through these converters. So, ID is the constant however, the voltage operation of these things are the varied and you can find here this uh, 
one uh, DC line is a grounded at one terminal, one terminal here, this is a line basically. So, we have grounded, it is basically for the specific application and this gives a more reliable and secure operation of this. So, this is the series uh, multi-terminal DC scheme. To combine with, we can say a uh, parallel here MTDC bipolar scheme with the mesh DC network. The previous was your radial. Here you can see this is your uh, this is term, uh, converter station 1, this is 2, this is 3, this is 4, but here you can see the network here. It is the mesh network. It is not radial. However, in the previous case, you can say it is a radial. It is coming and it is going here. So, this is almost radial. So, this is a radial DC network. However, we can find here it is we are having a mesh network and the connection is this. So, if you see the converter station connection diagram, this can be seen here the converter 1, 2, 3 and 4 because we are having 1, 2, 3 and 4. Now, converter 1 you can see it is connected here, this terminal is connected to the converter 2 and the converter 3. You can say this 1 here is connected to 2 and also it is connected to 3. Whereas, the 2 is connected to 4, you can say 2 it is going to connect it with the 4 and like this here and this one is also connected to 3 that is I said it is connected and 2 here is connected to 3. Similarly, you can see here also the 2 is connected to 3. So, it is a converter, uh, converter station connection and that is the mesh network because here network is mesh. We are having the different voltage because this you can say this is operating at the different voltage, this is the different voltage, this is the mesh network because they are, but if they are in the radial, so the voltage will be the same. So, hybrid multi-terminal DC system involving both series and parallel connection converter stations that can be used. As I said, we can have the series only, we can have parallel only and if you are going for the parallel and series combination, it is known as a hybrid uh, MTDC that is a multi-terminal DC transmission system that is also possible. So, availability of DC circuit breakers so, the flexibility of the system which affect their selection. Now, it is a with having the DC circuit breakers, it can we can have the flexibility operate without any problem because the big problem is the DC circuit breakers. If we can use this circuit breaker, then we can operate the inflexible miners and without a lot of problems that is existing in HVDC transmission can be eliminated with the help of this DC circuit breakers. The parallel configuration with the radial type connection has been considered by the majority of studies. Most of the studies they use this parallel configuration and proposed application for this MTDC because it is a simple and it is a very easily that can be analyzed. So, that is what people are using for the studies purpose. Mesh connections offers more redundancy, but requires greater length of DC lines because we are going for more and more lines and, but it offers more redundancy more, it can give more reliability of your network. Series connected schemes have been generally confined to the application of small power types. Normally, the series connection, if you will see in the series connection what is happened, this current is constant, the voltage is changing. So, that to change the power, what is happening, you have to change the voltage, current is constant and that which is flowing. So, series connected schemes have generally confined to the application of small power types because if current is fixed, if you are going for more current, then it will be more lossy and more voltage drop. So, the current can be minimized, sometimes you have the limited voltage, so the power can be reduced and that is why it is normally operating less power ratings. And it is more economical to operate at higher current because if you are increasing the current higher and the lower voltage, then insulation requirement and also the cost of the converter station can be reduced. But for the full voltage type, at the full voltage and current, the reduced current. In series types, the voltage rating is proportional to the power capacity of the type and, and it should have full DC network voltage insulation. Now, you can see in the series, the voltage rating is proportional to the power capacity. What does it mean? You know this DC power P here, it is your V into I and as I said, if it is a series, so this is basically it is your constant. So, what happens? You can see V is proportional to the P. Whenever you are changing the V, the power will be changing and that is why it is written voltage rating is proportional to the power capacity, what capacity you want. So, this is rated with this and it should have the this uh, full uh, have the full DC network voltage insulation. What does it mean? Even though you are having the sometimes operating at the lesser power rating, but still the voltage once you are designing the insulation level, it is the full voltage that you have to make. Whether you are modulating from higher, so your insulation level at the full voltage level and then you can change the voltage. 
So the flexibility of the power transfer could require a wide range of transformer types for the series stations. What we do, that is another option that you, as I said here, if you are having the tappings, so then you can change the time and thereby you can control the DC voltage of that side. So no doubt these are the DC voltage here and DC current. So we can also option that we can reduce the voltage by using the taps, we can also uh, flexibly operate and we can control the power in the series stations. However, the parallel scheme is uh, widely accepted as the most practical scheme for the fewest operational problem. It is the most widely accepted although there are some problems in this multi-terminal operation, but it is most accepted. It has the fewer line loss, easy to control and offers more flexibility for future expansion. As it said, the line loss is the minimum in the parallel scheme. Why? Because in the series schemes, we are putting this constant. However, this is the parallel and if I will say the P series, in the series, it is we are also we can write this DC into IDC. Here what happens? This is a constant and ID is changing. So what happens? Your loss that is I square R, it is changing. Your loss is going to be less. So when you are operating at the highest power level, it is highest loss and for the remaining period it is going to reduce. But here whatever the power you are operating, the current is constant. So I square R loss is constant and that is why you are incurring more and more loss. So the parallel operation will give the lesser loss, so means more efficient. And also it is very easy to control the parallel operation here because we can change the current, we can the DC voltage is maintained, and we can tap the currents and we can control. So the control becomes very easy and we will see later on the, how the control becomes easy in the parallel operation. And also it, offer, uh, it offers the flexibility in the future exp expansion because what happens now this voltage is maintained, you can add here as for very easily I can say here we can add another, we can add another here terminal and that you can see just like looking like a parallel operation having the four terminals multi -term. And this is a called a multi-terminal DC transmission. So you can see this the voltage is same very easily we are adding that only the current sharing is changed and then we can change the control philosophy and then we can operate in the very successful manner. So it is very easy to expand. However, in that here the diagram you will see in this diagram if you are adding here in this diagram if you are adding one converter then you have to see the what will the voltage drop and how to change the voltage rating of all these things. So the voltage of all these we are going to change, however here the voltage operation is, uh, is the voltage is same, current is changing, here we are making the current constant while the voltage is changing, so it is a slightly difficult to add in between. So the parallel schemes are better in and that is used for the most of the practical applications and due to the various region it is more efficient, easy to control, have a better flexibility for the future extension and also as I said that we can use the transfer type also for the voltage control etc. here. So this parallel scheme are better compared to the series schemes. Now let us move to this control of multi-terminal DC transmission system. As we know the basic control principle for the multi-terminal uh, terminal system is a generalization of the two terminal HVDC system. No doubt, as I said here in the two terminal system here if there is no multi terminal here the control scheme if you find how we go for the control this we are having the control characteristic if you remember already we discussed in this our the, uh, the module 3 here this is your CIA that is a constant extinction angle, constant ignition angle control and then we are having here CC that is for your rectifier and then we had if you remember here we had another it is called CEA control that is a constant extinction angle control this is for your inverter and then we are having some beta control if you remember this is a beta control then we are having here CC even though we can have some constant voltage control as some people suggested the constant voltage control or maybe the constant beta control that is a both are applicable and then then it was found that uh, for the lower voltage we can basically keep this here and this is we can provide this video call and this is called voltage dependent current order limiters that can also put at the lower voltage. So you can see this is a control characteristic, this is your rectifier characteristic, we are operating CIA, constants, uh, ignition angle control then CC, here we are having constant current control, then we can have constant voltage or constant beta control, then we are having the CA constant extension angle control. 
for the lower voltage operation which may require some times and the our converter station or converter should not be stressed much we provide the uh, voltage dependent control current order limiters that will reduce in the power rating and we can operate during the emergency or during some other problem so we are having the dedicated one is controlling one option then another is controlling here one is controlling voltage another may be controlling the current or vice versa you can say always the control aspect is the intersection of this two characteristic will give you operation so now for example you can see here your the rectifier is operating on constant current however this is operating in cea board or vice versa if the voltage is reduced sometimes we can go here and you can see this is intersection then this is operating your cia and the inverter is operating on the constant current mode so i mean to say that, uh, say that this is a multi terminal uh, dc transmission system is the basically generalization of the two terminal control and we'll see our next slides so the control characteristic for each converter is composed of the segments representing the constant current that is the cc control then we are having the constant firing angle that is a constant ignition angle control and that is basically the ca for inverter and cia for rectifier and an optional the constant voltage segment may be included and that is a optional which i said this characteristic is constant voltage or constant beta segment can be included so this characteristic for all this stations will have the characteristic all together because one may operating if it is operating as a rectifier then we can take this characteristic if it is operating as an inverter then we can take this characteristic and vice versa so what um, uh, the number of uh, your terminals we can have the number of characteristic because the same converter can operate rectifier as an inverter so we'll see that uh, in the later slides the converter characteristic together with the dc network condition establishes the operating point of the system and for a common point to exist a converter control is a characteristic must intersect as i said that's the, to have the successful and stable control operation we should have the intersection of these two characteristic if this is your suppose rectifier so this characteristic if it is inverter if this characteristic they must intersect and here basically we provide some current margin so that there should not be overlapping here so that margin is positive margin is given in the parallel operation now we can go for the multi terminal dc control aspect in the parallel operation all the parallel converters are connected to the same line as i said it is connected in the same line the parallel converters are provided with the voltage and current control they can control voltage they can control current this is provided in the parallel connected system one terminal establishes the operating voltage of the dc system and all other terminal operate on cc mode means here if you are having uh, another terminal for example uh, this two so if one is out of these three is operating is maintaining your voltage other will be operating in the constant current mode so that because the voltage is maintained by this one and then current will be the share of whatever the current is going that will be share here and they will be operating that current constant current mode so if it is a dc here the current is say i can say dc so this is idc1 here and this is idc2 so this will be the idc is equal to idc1 plus idc2 so this is maintaining your voltage so the idc1 will be maintained by this and idc2 will be maintained by this another another one so that's why it is said in the parallel operation one will be operating on the voltage control and another will be others will be on constant current control mode the voltage setting terminal uh, is one with the smallest ceiling now it in all out of three who will be your voltage control and for that uh, normally it is the voltage setting terminal is one with the smallest ceiling voltage which have the smallest voltage will be used the voltage control and this may be either rectifier on cia control or an inverter on the ca control we will see it is uh, in the given example i am going to show one example where we have four terminal hvdc system is there in which it is assumed that the two terminals are operating as a rectifier and the two are operating as inverter you can see here and their control characteristics are you can see here this is a rectifier characteristic having the cea and you know that the rectifier will have the cea and the constant current, uh, current control this is your rectifier 2 it is a cia and the cc that's again the constant ignition angle control and this uh, constant current control and we are having the two inverters one is uh, 
here inverter 1 that is operating under C A that is a constant ex extension angle control and the constant current control and another is also operating here only it is magnitude and the slope of C A is different here also you can find the C A slope and here is a different. Now to find this is basically the individual converter characteristic which is operating. No doubt if this is also operating in inverter mode, so this will again shift from the CIA and CC mode to CEA and CC mode so like uh, inverter 1 and inverter 2. To have this what we to have a common characteristic, what we do we combine the rectifier characteristic in 1 and the inverter characteristic in 1. So, you can see if you will combine here since it is a parallel operation minded because we are talking the parallel operation, so voltage is a constant. So, you can see the voltage line the dotted line here for a given operating voltage. Now, you can say this is operating in the CA, CIA mode, this is operating in the constant current, this is operating in the constant current and this is also operating in the constant current, which I said in the earlier slide that one is operating at the constant voltage and that is controlling the voltage and others are operating at the constant current means the CC, CC and CC here. To see what will the voltage etcetera, what we can do, we can combine the characteristic of rectifier 1 and rectifier 2 in 1 and now you can find this one characteristic you see this is a characteristic slope then there is a it is a heating here the constant characteristic uh, constant current now it is a lesser so it is coming here then again we are having this characteristic and then finally it is a constant current control so you can find at here this characteristic the slope you can find here this is coming then the constant current then we are adding so we just added so this is a combined characteristic of rectifier similarly we can have the this is a current here is a constant you can say this is this value and this value is that can be shown here equal although it can have the different one as well because the different current uh, regulations can be possible margin we can give the different here you can say the id 1 and id 2 are different here although in this figures we have taken id 1 and id 2 same so what happens this will be for same id we are having this characteristic that is a constant current and these two characteristic are added then this will give a different slope so here this characteristic here is your combined inverter characteristic and now you can say intersection of here you should mind it intersection of here is basically this actual operating now what is happening now you can see once you are operating here, so your this is a characteristic of this, so it is operating on CIA and others are operating in the constant current control here C, oh sorry, here this is operating in CC and CC and this is also operating on the CC. So this is operating on the constant current and this is the overall characteristic and then control characteristic of the parallel connected multi terminal DC systems. In this diagram uh, basically we consider the only for one pole as I said if it is a multi terminal DC system so then you are having the two terminals and then accordingly you can have the control characteristic also we did not uh, consider the VD call that is the voltage dependent current order limiter has not been considered for the assembly city however I have said that it can be the lower voltage operation here that we can have the VD call characteristic however only I showed on the top of the portion here but if you can go for the lower voltage this characteristic also can be added and for the simplicity I did not so in the our combined characteristic here. It is also assumed that each terminal has the only two modes of operation that CC will be there in all this terminal and then either of CEA or CIA will be. So, if it is a rectifier then CIA CC if inverter it is a CEA and CC the voltage control option is not considered we are not controlling the voltage it is assumed that rectifier 1 is a voltage setting terminal because it is operating in the CIA mode you can just sit here this is a here for this voltage is working the CIA mode from here also you can see it CIA mode the type changers keeps the angle within the desired range to maintain the stable voltage uh, stable control operation a positive current margin must be maintained and that margin as I said here you can see this we are putting some margin here that margin is coming all the time this is the current margin. So, from this current and this current there is some margin that will give you a stable operation and that is a positive current margin must be maintained. If an inverter is at the voltage controlling station there is a possibility the voltage is at this CEA mode and then it is a vulnerable to 
in advert overloading if you are going there so that's the possibility that it is overloaded and it is unable to control the current at its terminal in the event of the system the front or the overload so this is a very very difficult if the inverter is operating in the voltage controlling station the disconnection of uh, a current uh, control inverter will require the reallocation of rectifier current setting to the to prevent the overloading the voltage control inverter so what happens the disconnection of the current controlled inverter will require reallocation of current settings here and there that is also is a difficult task if a rectifier defines the system voltage operation is more stable so that's why we want that the rectifier should basically operate the system voltage and that's why because it's more stable all the inverters con control currents as i said if it is in cc mode thereby avoiding the operation of the less stable cea control the cea control is a constant ex extinction angle control that is a constant gamma and that's a because if there is any problem during this uh, commutation uh, here then inverter will be in not a stable mode so we want that uh, they should operate in the current control in the normal case the voltage controlling rectifier is capable of protecting itself without the causing overloading of other stations so whenever there is a problems and then the voltage control rectifier can pr protect itself by causing the overloaded of the other stations the system is less dependent on high speed communication hence it is more secure here you can see in the parallel operation that's one station is controlling this others are controlling current so the communication requirement is also limited i said one is idc1 here in this example and another is idc2 and this is a very easy that uh, that it can operate so in general the voltage control at the large rectifier terminal should be provided better performance and that is that is the case another here the quad in, uh, coordination and the balancing between the parallel converters can always be assured as no telecommunication is needed because here i can say the balance here the idc here which is required by this current will be if it is they are operating as an inverter here so it is always balanced so if you can maintain this one so this dc is the flowing and this automatically it will be taken care without even a uh, communication requirement but since we require the communication because sometimes they have to exchange their operation one is controlling voltage maybe going to the current control mode and here and there during the event of communication uh, commutation failure or the mal operation of any of the converters in that case there are the variations depending on the configuration how to treat the transient current sharing at the disturbance and the fault that is said that if there is any disturbance mal operation of the converter then how they are going to say that's a different configuration and different operations are and different way mechanism to handle this situation is already suggested in the literature we are having the now you can see the what are the various type of operations one is the, no doubt the normal steady state operation where as i said the convert uh, one rectifier should be on the cia and other rectifiers along with all the inverters should work in the cc mode that is your normal steady state operation the parallel converters in the same stations if the two stations are there then we have to see which one will operate the voltage and which will operate the current because they will be communicating to other converter stations the multi terminal schemes all the converters with the similar rating there is a possibility that say uh, here the multi terminal scheme all the converters having the similar rating so then who will be taking what also the typings with the smaller converters because the type change which is with a smaller inverter station how to control those. so this is the one concern here a scheme with the more than two inverters and the rectifier then situation becomes more and more complex so all these things should be the different scenarios are there and that must be addressed accordingly so we saw uh, the advantages of parallel connected uh, multi terminal dc transmission system let us uh, see the all the, as i said there are some of the problems as well in this uh, parallel connected uh, multi terminal dc transmission system as well uh, to understand this we can see there is uh, four bullet points so first one you can see any disturbance on the dc system that may be a line fault or the commutation failure affects the entire dc system as i said that's a disturbance may come in the transmission line that's a dc transmission line and if there is any problem in the commutation failure in inverter normally as i said the, uh, already we explained in the various module that the inverter commutation failure is the major concern of the inverter stations so that will affect the entire dc system and therefore that is a one of the problem with this parallel connected empty dc the reversal of power at any terminal requires the mechanical switch operation what does it mean 
Let's suppose you are having this two terminal and I can just make it the multi terminal here this is your rectifier operation and then you are having here the inverter operation at this end. So this is a two terminal if you are having another inverter operation here so now it is becomes a three terminal and of course it is a multi terminal as well. So if here this is your power that is the I is going here that is ID here we want this ID C1 here if you are going for IDC2. Now this voltage which is the DC here the voltage is a single pole operation I am talking. The power which is feed here that is going from the rectifier to the inverter this PDC is nothing but your V that is the DC voltage here I am talking into your IDC. This power is feed from the rectifier and it is going to the inverter as well as here. Now, if I want to change the power here reversal means here if I want to I want to inject the power what will happen we cannot change the direction of current because in this the current direction is decided only we have to change the voltage polarity. So, whatever here which which was here this is as I said this is a positive and negative. So, the power was drawn from this inverter and going to the AC system here here as well. Suppose you want to make this is as a rectifier you want to feed the power or power reversal. So, this will be require the complete swapping because current you cannot change. So, what will happen you have to require a mechanical switch so that you can change and this will be operating in this rather than in this mode here I can say this is your this is and this is positive this is negative and this becomes a rectifier. So, we require the mechanical switch for the reversal of power in any of this device it is not possible here. However, when we had the two terminal it was very easy for example, you can see that it was possible that we can slowly maintaining the current we can change we can shift this rectifier to the inverter and this inverter can shift to this rectifier and then we can have the power reversal from one direction to another direction without having the mechanical switch. But here it is not possible no doubt the current margin is to be changed already we saw the control characteristic of your rectifier and the inverter we require some change in the margin that will be done but it is very easily we can transfer but here in the multi terminal as I said you require the mechanical switch operation to change from direction of the power that is the power reversal. The blocking of a single bridge suppose you are having the multiple bridge operation you are having the two bridge or you are having the different converters here then in a converter station consisting of two or more series connected bridges require either operation of whole system at the reduced bolt or the disconnection of the affected station. So, here to if you want to bypass you are taking it for the block this single bridge for the various regions suppose you want to block and take it out for the maintenance and other operation if there is some problem then you have to maybe possibility that you can block the complete or disconnect the complete station in this one and then you can go for the operation for other as well. So, the communication failure at the inverter can draw the current from the other terminal and this may affect the recovery. So, there is a possibility in this parallel operation if one inverter is in the commutation failure. So, that can draw the current from the other terminal and that may affect the recovery of the system and the stable operation of the system. So, let us go for the second variety that is a series connected system. Here as I said in the series connected system the current is constant and then the voltage is, is changed and then power is basically the control. In the series connected system the current is controlled by one terminal and all other terminals either operate at the constant angle or gamma control or reduce and or regulate the voltage. Means if you will see the previous case what was happening in this parallel operation one is controlling the voltage and others are controlling on the CC means this is nothing but it is your CIA control and others are controlling the current. But here it is a reverse because if one is controlling CC and other is controlling basically the V, V can be your CIA or it can be your CEA it depends upon the whether rectifier or inverter. So, one is station converter station is on constant current control and others are in the voltage are regulating the voltage that is called here you know it is very well this is a constant gamma here constant alpha and that is why it is written here this constant angle control. If sum of the rectifier voltage at the order current is greater than the sum of the inverter voltage then the rectifier with the lowest current order assumes the current control otherwise the inverter with the higher voltage higher current order assumes the current control. 
basically this is the philosophy that which one will be the constant current control suppose you are having the variety of con converters then we will be taking this already i said here the rectifier will be taking here if who will be taking the constant current mode for that it is written that if the sum of the rectifier voltage at the ordered current is greater than the sum of the inverter voltage then the rectifier with the lowest current order assume the current control and otherwise the inverter with the higher current order assume the current control we will see the characteristic in the next slide. For series system the voltage reference must be balanced whereas for parallel system the current uh, reference must be coordinated. Here the parent uh, as I said where the parallel systems the current reference because it must be coordinated because in the parallel I said this IDC will be equal to IDC1 plus IDC2. And here we are talking the voltage should be because it is in a series, so the voltage should be the balance. We have to have a closed loop balance. However, the coordination problem is critical for the parallel system and it is not for the e uh, series system. Series system, the coordination is very easier in the, because the voltage we are controlling and very easily we can control the voltage of E, the converter terminal. Current we are controlling and that is uh, requiring more efforts. So, the problem is critical for the coordination in the parallel system however in the EG the coordination becomes very easy because the current is the same only the voltage you are controlling of all the converters so it is easier. See this characteristic this is the controller characteristic of the series system here also it is assumed that we are having the four converter stations so we are having converter 1, converter 2, converter 3 and converter 4 and the converter 1 and 2 are in the rectifier mode of operation and the converter 3 and 4 are in the inverter mode. So, you can see here CIA and CIA plus CC, CIA plus CC that shows that it is a rectifier and you can see the CEA plus CC and the CEA plus CC here characteristic means these are inverters. Since we are operating at a constant current and that is correct constant current you can say let us suppose this is a constant current here. So, this is a constant current and then voltage is changing. Now, what we can do we can add the characteristic of the rectifier at one end and the inverter on the other side they are having the different current margin. You can see here this is I2, this is I3, this is I4 and here we are having the I1 here. This I1 is for basically here. So, now if you can add these two characteristic you can find this plus at the I2 here this is a characteristic is just going here and then we are going to add this characteristic and then you can say here this we are having again. So, basically this characteristic CIA plus here we are adding CC, then we are having here another the slope of this characteristic, then we are going to have I1 here. So, this is the basically the characteristic because the current here is the larger. So, first we are having this characteristic, then we are adding this characteristic. So, the combined characteristic of rectifier is this, this and then finally here. However, this inverter characteristic you can say I3 is the first. So, we are having I3 characteristic here. Then we are going to add I4 at the when I4 is coming. So, this characteristic will be added other than this. So, here I4 going here you can see and this is a combined inverter characteristic. Now, the intersection point you can find here we are just intersection is this seems that one is operating as a constant current control and that is nothing but your inverter here rectifier 2. So, I do is your the constant current and others are operating on the voltage mode they are controlling either CEA you can say this is a controlling CEA this is in uh, CIA sorry here CEA and here also CEA. So, this is your overall operation of this uh, control characteristic of the series system. So, as I said here one is CC remaining on your either CIA or CEA control in this case you can say converter rectifier 1 is on CIA control and your converter 3 and 4 on CEA control. So, series system <laughs> allows high speed reversal of power at any terminal without the need for switching operation because the ID is which is a constant which is flowing. You can change the voltage very easily from rectifier to inverter. You can delay the angle. Finally, that will become your the negative voltage and that is the reversal of power because the P is equal to ID into VD. So, ID is the unidirectional VD if you are changing that you can delay the angle the VD will change and the finally, the reversal is very easy. And however, it is very difficult in the parallel operation because you require mechanical switch to switch over. Also, the bridges and the terminals can be taken out for the service without affecting the rest of the system because the ID is a constant. 
So you can take it out, you can just bypass that one and then you can maintain the ID and you can take it out without problem and then of course you have to see the voltage in that closed loop. So it is easier compared to your parallel operation. So already whatever the problems in the parallel operation, here you can find the series connections giving the better deal and that easily we can solve those problems. The communication between the terminals is required for the controlling the line loading to minimize the losses which can be achieved by relatively slow communication here even the slow communication can do the purpose. The operation of converters in series requires the converter operation at higher firing angles. The operation of converter in the series requires the converter operation at a higher firing angle and this can be minimized by the type changing control and the backing of one of the bridge against other. What happens here since we are going to operate this alpha angle the CIA or CEA control where this we are just hitting its limit we are at uh, its a higher firing angle but we can use the tappings and that tappings basically used uh, for the minimizing this voltage uh, this requires the converter operation with a higher because one the which is operating the constant current here this may having the higher angle and that can be minimized by the tappings of this one. Drawbacks of the series connected system that is uh, as the voltage to the ground is a different in the different various part of the system the coordination is complex and expensive and losses are higher at the lower voltage as I said even the voltage are less but the current which is flowing in the line that is I square R I is always constant so it is more lossy even though our voltage is less or even the power is less but still the loss is higher. So the efficiency is one of the concern. The permanent line fault causes interruption of the entire system if there is a line fault. So what happens the current is going to be short circuited and once it is a short circuited then whole system is to be stopped and then it should be rectified. However, if there is any problem we can very easily solve in this your parallel system. Flexibility for the future extension is limited. It is difficult to put a one converter inside because we have to change the voltage regulation their coordination here and there. However, in the parallel operation it is the easier. So now with this series as well as the parallel connections now we find that both type of configurations are having its own problem or limitations that is a advantage as well as the uh, merits and demerits. But we find the parallel operations are still better that is the more efficient uh, however, it is a ex extension is a very uh, easier compared to this. So again based on your requirement that you have to choose for the, if you are going for the multi terminal DC transmission system whether you want the parallel or series and then you can go ahead with this. So you have to see the limitations here as well as the parallel and then you have to decide accordingly. That is why people go for the hybrid system and that with the better option if you really go for the multi terminal more than the 3 and 4 terminals. The control uh, and the protection here the most uh, most significant stress due to the multi terminal is the increased transient and temporary over voltage in the inverters at any type of disturbance in the fault all as all parallel converter contribute the uh, current overshoot. Because if you are having uh, some disturbance then the transient over voltage and the transients that is the inverter operation is going to be difficult lead and more stressy very heavily in the multi terminal operation. When the faults in a multi terminal network is cleared by the full size SVDC breaker, switching type over voltage is introduced into the DC system. You are having the switching type over voltage that is also one of the concern. So these are the concerns which I am talking about the protection and the control schemes. Mm, with the number of terminals or the converter operating in the parallel, the importance of the telecommunication for coordination in the multi terminal is the increases because as I said we have to go for more and more. Uh, uh, communication uh, for the ultra high voltage the DC transmission system. If the equipment is protected against the damage of lack of coordination, interterminal actions may lead to the prolonged disturbances and the loss of all converter connected to the same pole lines. It is not possible to change the load without the telecommunication because if you want to change the load here we require the communication between all these terminals. So it is without the com telecommunication or communication requirement it is not possible even the manual change of the load flow requires the communication between the operation. If you want to change the power who is going to share different then we require the control aspects and it should be communicated to each other. Some other issues are uh, basically how to deal with already we talked about the two terminal DC for the load flow and the stability studies. Now if you are having the multi terminal cases then you have to again solve their load flow problem 
Now you have to write the governing equations for the extra terminals as well and you have to solve the your DC equations for your the extra stations and then along with that you have to solve your AC DC equations. So the AC DC load flow what we are going to do we are going to add some extra uh, equations for the terminals and then the control the DC characteristic along with the DC equations are going to increase because as here as I said if you have the parallel operation here this one extra you are have to write here the equation for this inverter here and this whatever the current balance equation here the DC1 and the DC2 is there so we have to write another equations. So we have to add the DC equations for this another some extra governing equations that should be used in the DC part and then finally you have to form the HDC equation whether you are going for the sequential or you are going for the um, uh, elimination variable method or unified methods then you have to eliminate those variables and you have to solve and then you can go for the load flow. Similarly, if you are going for the stability studies as well, in the stability studies you have to write this DC equations whether you are taking at the simple model or you are going for the detail or response model. Accordingly, we have to write the control aspect, control characteristic of the extra terminals that will be also used and then if you are going for the transient stability then you have to solve the differential equation corresponding to both terminals and also if you are going for the steady state uh, dynamic stability or small signal stability then you have to write the Lenormand equation corresponding to extra terminal and then you have to see there is eigenvalues analysis and then you can find the system stability. So simply if you are writing more and more converters you have to write more and more governing equations then you can use in your system uh, in your methods whatever you are existing one of the like the two terminal cases you have to add it. So since we are talking here the one uh, diverse topic there is a multi terminal already we discussed much in detail about the two terminal SVDC system for both load flow and the stability studies that should be incorporated because here I discuss only the control aspects but the load flow and the stability studies whatever the extra terminals you are having you have to write the governing equations accordingly and you have to incorporate in your whether it is a load flow then you are on the load flow or if you are going for the stability, stability studies you have to incorporate there. So with this uh, I am going to conclude that in this uh, lecture I just discussed the multi terminal HVDC system because uh, if you are having the two terminals there are certain limitations that can be solved by this uh, multi terminal HVDC system and the, the more advancement if you are going for HVDC, HVDC based on the IGD, IGBTs and then will solve a lot of problems and then you can go for the multi terminal DC systems as well which gives you more flexibility and it will offer more advantage that is the point to point transmission is no more valid and you can go for more typings of a power. So, this ends the lecture number 1 of this module 7 and in the next lecture we will discuss about the HVDC light or HVDC plus and that will be discussed in the next lecture. Thank you.